Welcome to The Three Minute Writer, I'm Eric Wyatt. I heard from a fellow writer and creative writing client, Ginger, recently. She said she enjoyed the three episode uh, video series I did on balance in the creative life. But, she said, how do you account for the Hemingways of the world? You know, great artists who certainly weren't balanced in their emotional, spiritual, physical, and creative selves, but yet created these great works. Of course, Ginger has a point. Cheever, Hemingway, Fitzgerald, Capote, and these are just some of the guys that are on my shelf at home um, who had major areas of their lives that were just dramatically out of balance, and yet they produced these amazing literary works. And the music and movie industries are both riddled with those who have produced groundbreaking works while suffering from major imbalances in their lives. What I said to Ginger, and what I still believe, is that I believe uh, balance is a key to sustained creativity. Yes, there are geniuses who can produce amazing work, even while besieged by addictions and dramatic personnel upheavals, um, or even chemically or genetically induced uh, personality disorders. But for most of us, that just isn't the case. And you know, even for some of those folks, it wasn't the case. What they thought they were doing so well they really weren't. Stevie Ray Vaughan was my favorite blues guitarist, uh, Texas bluesman. And when he was in the midst of his drug and alcohol fueled madness, he thought he was playing this great, um, this great brand of, of blues, rock and roll kind of music. But when he got sober, he listened back to some of the tapes, uh, uh, some of the recordings of things he had done during those years, and he realized just how sloppy he really was being. Now, this was sloppy for his standards, of course. He was still playing guitar in a way um, that most people can't, that most people can't e even dream of. But he realized how he was short-selling himself and, and his fans by being so out of balance. And there are plenty of others who have come through long bouts with addiction and found that the addiction didn't fuel their genius, um, even though that had been one of their favorite excuses. The challenge here is this. Do we look at the troubled genius and conclude that their great work is a result of their destructive excess? Or do we conclude that they were able to produce these great things despite their imbalance? Do we consider addictions and excess to be a shortcut to creativity and creative success? Or do we conclude that these imbalances don't actually benefit anyone? and they cut short or completely destroy creative lives. Only the good die young. It's the kind of line we come up with to trick ourselves into making some sense out of early deaths of people who brought us great joy. Uh, um, maybe someone on the, from the movies or a musician or a writer who died early because of their excess. And we tell ourselves that only the good die young in order to make some sense. But when I see Philip Seymour Hoffman in the recent film, A Most Wanted Man, that sort of drivel just doesn't cut it for me. It doesn't make me feel any better. I believe he was a brilliant actor and would have been a brilliant actor without his addictions. The big difference is he probably would have been around for many more years playing many more great roles. Instead, he was found dead, surrounded not by the love and appreciation and admiration that so many people felt for him, but by drug paraphernalia and emptiness. I believe that creativity and the ability to remain prolific are a product of deep um, curiosity, quality instruction and ongoing investigation, um, constant practice, nurturing both internal and external of the creative spirit, and the will of the creative person to do, to do the best they can today and then try to do even better tomorrow. And the way to be fully engaged in ongoing create creativity is to seek balance in all areas of life. At least, that's how I see it. I'm Eric Sheridan Wyatt, The Three Minute Writer. I hope you'll come by the comments section of my website and leave a message about what you think the, about balance in the creative life. Until next time, I'm sending my best to you and yours, and I'm wishing you happy writing.